Hey guys, it's Hey Sophia and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on how to build a African safari lodge. So something you wouldn't have known about me, I went to South Africa back in 2014. I'll put a few pictures on the screen now, some of the animals I saw. I had a really great time. I recommend going if you've been thinking about it. But yeah, let's start with the video. So you'll typically find that on game reserves in Africa there are three types of lodges that you'll find. First is the tent style lodge, second is more the budget friendly little mini uh, house lodges that you'll find just around the game reserve. The third is the luxury style lodge which is what I'm going to be building here. These luxury style lodges you'll typically find they will build them on the edge of little hillsides or cliffs so that way when the guests exit their lodge they go to their pool or their little balcony and they have a whole view of the game reserve and they can see elephants walking around or giraffes, things like that. So that's what I'm going for here. I'm just building a little infinity style pool here, just a little tiny one for my guests or myself to use. If you want to have this as a house, that's fine. I'm using the edging with sandstone and then for the main retaining wall that's kind of supporting this structure I'm going for the hardened clay block as the orange colour is really what you will find in a lot of these houses. I'm just kind of then speckling the sandstone down through it so it looks like it's being joined together if that makes sense. I'm just going to be building a little edging around my pool. I'm going to focus more on the outdoor areas later. I'm just building the basics for now. So now that we have the basics built, we're going to get started on the lodge house itself. So these luxury houses, they tend to be a open style lodge. So what that means is that they have walls kind of on just three sides of the structure and then the back area or the front door as well as this one will be. It's quite open to the environment so you don't have a wall. I'm just putting a little kind of like retaining, like a half, half, half wall? Yeah. Like a little half wall, just so you're completely open to the environment, you get the views, things like that. So I'm going with the hard and clear like I mentioned for my wall here, because a lot of them will actually be this exact colour in a stone. So if you don't like the look of the hard and clear though, you could also use the sandstone block for your walls if you prefer a yellowy colour one. Or you could go for a bone block if you want white, or sometimes you'll typically also find them in wood. So I would probably be going for a spruce or a dark oak if you want to be doing wood, as woods that they will use in these lodges typically are a darker colour. So I'm just building my roof now. The typical style that you will see for safari lodges is a thatch roof. Obviously there is no thatchy style blocks in Minecraft. The closest you can probably get is the hay block, but I don't really want to be building a roof out of hay with red lines all through it. So I'm going today for the grey hardened clay block is, as this is probably the exact same colour as you will find for thatch roofs. Thatch roofs are like a blacky browny colour, so this style block here is the closest colour that you'll get matching to a thatch roof. The design that I'm doing for my luxury one is a overhanging thatch roof, so you'll find that it will be flat on top and then it will curve down to the walls on each side. But then you'll see that they'll actually overhang the walls, so my little corners here will actually come down past the wall a little bit more. So I'm going to be, normally I would probably speed through the roof or not show too much into it, but because these are actually quite hard, I'm going to show you one side completely how I did it and how I played around. And then I will skip ahead and do the other side. That's why this video is a little bit longer because you really need to be paying a lot of detail to the roof to get it properly. 
So for my entryway to my open structure, as you can see, I've kind of made a curve here and then I've just made it, I'm going to make it just flat on the back side. It won't have that big overhanging type entry archway curve thing. For the top here as well, I'm going for the black hardened clay because you need a different block and just a line on top, which will kind of be the outline for where the curve starts. If you have a look on Google Images at Safari Houses, even the little simple style budgety type ones, you'll see that they will either have a stone block on top or they'll have a kind of like this exact black uh, hardened clay colour. I'm assuming it might be to hold all the thatch in place or it could be just be decorative, I'm not quite sure. But you just want to make sure that you're including it in your build to be as, as, sorry, as <laughs> realistic as possible. So you'll see that on my back entry here, the roof will curve down a little bit steeper because I don't have that archway at the front. But I will compensate that by adding a little bit more of a overhang at the back wall. As you can see, if you look at the roof from the side there, you can see how it's got a really nice curve going on and you want that same kind of natural progression curve going on the sides. Obviously, because it is a full block and there is no half slabs, it's a little bit harder to make it quite natural looking. If you are playing also in PvE or survival and you can't easily get the, this like hardened, the grey hardened clay block, you could always try and maybe replicate the look by using dark oak because dark oak can be a bit easier. That's probably the only thing I can think of or maybe spruce. You don't want to be going too light with the roof. You want to kind of be keeping it dark. Or maybe you could also use brown wool if wool was something. It probably won't look as authentic but it's, it's PB and survival. You got to play with what you get I suppose. So as you can see, I'm now kind of making my overhang on my edges here. These are really, really important and they greatly add to your build. You need these overhangs on this particular style to make it look quite natural. So you're seeing, as you can see, I'm kind of making it like a arrow shape and then I'm just taking away and adding to it as I need. This is why I'm showing this complete, like, this complete way of how I'm building it at the moment because it can be quite difficult as you can see I've had to play around with it a lot but if you look from the front like I did just then you can see it's already looking really good and it's starting to get that shape now I'm going to stop talking now and just let the music play and then once I finish the side we will speed up ahead and start doing the interior So as you can see, I have finished my roof now. It actually turned out really, really well. I'm really pleased with it. We're now just going to simply join up these columns that I placed on the wall. These are kind of like support beams because you don't have the wall there. So these little fence posts of dark oak are going to play that role there. I will open up the roof a little bit just temporarily to add more light. So I'll do that once I finish here. For my full structure, I am using dark oak because it is a dark wood and you will find that they'll typically use dark oak planks inside these luxury houses. If you don't like the look of the wood though and you're wanting something a bit more natural, I'll probably continue on with the hardened clay that I've used for the walls and the floor outside. So on the inside here for some detail in the roof, I'm going to be adding some support this support blah, blah, support beam structures with the dark oak. I'm just going to put a couple of holes here to add some light while I do this. So the idea is that there's like little wooden support beams inside the thatch roof. I'm not going to be adding support beams really low down. They're just literally going to be on the edging of the roof. So it looks like they've been built up and over and then the thatch roof is built over them. So as you can see that you kind of just want to be placing it right against the wall, naturally going with the shape. 
You just want to make them look like they've built down that particular curvy way and then that they've built the, the roof is like built over it. You get what I mean? Um, if you really wanted, you could build a support beam along the front here, but I find when you do that, it ruins the look a little bit. So I'm just going to keep that open and just keep the columns there. I'm not going to build over it. I'm going to just keep it very open so you've got a full view of the savannah. And then we're also going to build these just on the ends as well. is done we're gonna get started on some interiors so with the interiors of these lodges you want to be keeping it quite earthy neutral tones so I would recommend going with dark greens browns maybe some whites as well you just want to be keeping it that kind of you'll you'll see if you stay in the safari lodge yourself that they kind of keep it like native African-y looking. They just want like the guests to be really involved in the ex experience and feel like they're staying in Africa. So they will typically go over the top with neutral tones, things like that. So I'm just going to try and replicate that as well. I've just built a little toilet room here. I'm keeping it the wall, the wall of the toilet area very open. Um, you don't want to be going above the wall structure otherwise it's going to make it a little bit too odd So for my roof inside my toilet area, I just use sandstone half slabs so that way you've still got height in there, but you're not Poking out over the top and making the wall look a little bit weird So I'm going to be building two little mini wall structures in here So I'll be building one open wall that will split my lounge room area from my bedroom area in the center and then I'll also be building a little mini wall just to the far right. So I've got a little area that separates my bath from my bedroom. So because these are open houses and they are very private, you'll typically find that they will put buffs or showers right in the view. So you're right out there in the open, but it's so you're on a game reserve. There's no people going around and your neighbors won't be able to see you. So you will find that they will have baths that will be right at the entry entry or like windows so you can have the view. My paintings aren't working so I will, I'll fix that later and I'll do that when I finish off my interiors. So I'll speed ahead now and you'll see that I'll be done. I've also added a couple of heads for decoration in my decor on the inside here. The other thing that I've added that you'll see is that I'll add a mosquito net over my bed. So I'm just going to be achieving that by using white glass blocks, as you can see there now, to kind of act like a mosquito net. Because these houses are very open, you will find that they'll typically have mosquito nets over the bed. Mosquitoes can be a really big problem in Africa, especially when you have malaria. So I've put a glass little fake mosquito net over my bed there. I'm also adding torches for lighting to keep it kind of rusticy and natural looking. And I'm just going to fill up the roof holes now because I don't need them. As you can see, there's my toilet as well. So I'm going to be adding a little tiny fireplace here, just a very open one. To do that, I'll be using sandstone because it accents the pool blocks that I use because I've used sandstone for my pool. And I'll just be keeping that in a very open way. So I'll just put my netherrack block down the bottom. I'll then surround it with sandstone and uh, grey glass panels. Yes, grey. <laughs> and then I'll use sandstone slabs on top and make a little chimney that will come out the top.
So as you can see, I just built my little fireplace. I've just lit it. It looks very cute and it suits the room. Makes it a little bit warmer as well, just so, cause, because sometimes it can get actually really cold in Africa. It was a little bit cold when I was there. So I'm going to go ahead now and be building my outdoor entertaining area. So because this is an open style luxury lodge, you'll find that some of them won't actually have front doors, but that they'll be fenced off with a gate to the side and then your gate's actually the entry to your house. So I'm going to be building my outdoor area now. One side I will have a area for seating, the other side I'll make a little barbecue and then I will be building a fence on the side with seating so there'll be no access to the lodge at all from that side. And then the side on the right here I'll be building a little pathway which will have a little fenced off area which will be then have a entry gate. So for my walls here, I'm just using the hardened clay. I will accent them a little bit later on with some sandstone slabs on top just to add a little bit more colour. I'm also just adding dark oak fencing for my balcony colour railing because you don't want your, yourself or your guests to be falling off the edge of the cliff here. And it also just it matches the fencing that you'll use inside the structure as your support beams. So I'm going to skip ahead now and do my gardens. I'm just going to be adding a tree which is the exact same type of trees that I've used around my house and then using, uh, not spruce, sorry, perch, jungle oak leaves, tall ferns, tall grass and the little mini ferns just for decoration around and I will also fill in my pool. As you can see though, before we skip ahead a little bit more, I'm just showing you quickly the little fence that I built. So as you can see, you got like, that's the gate I was talking about. So normally you'll have your guests access the house from there and you're completely private and there is my accenting. So you can see the accent just adds a little bit more detail, but now I will actually skip ahead and go and do my plants. Sorry for saying I'll skip ahead earlier. Maybe I won't skip ahead. I am really bad at recording. I do apologize, like I said in my first few videos, I'm still learning. But yeah, so as you can see, I'm not going to decorate too much on this path out here because I'm not going to focus on outside of my housing structure. But that's my little pathway and I'll just accent it with some beams as well. There we go, so now I've actually skipped ahead. This is a little bride pit that I've just built there as well and I've just added some little chairs outside and some umbrellas. But as you can see, there is my luxury African safari lodge house. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Sorry for my weird talking and skipping ahead mentions at the end there, which I didn't. I think it's actually turned out really, really well and it does look like an actual luxury safari lodge it's one particular style i might go into more if i did a savannah style biome starter house i might show you a couple of simple ones but yeah please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and like always thank you bye